I actually believe very much that we could have the same sort of thing play out to go to some crazy price in a, in a media phase. But given the growing industrial demand for silver, I cannot see it coming back down. If it went to something like $100 or $150 to see it coming back to down to $30, I just cannot see that given the, uh, the, the burgeoning and growing demand for, uh, for this metal. Wish where every one of the silver bulls go, what the heck is going on? And maybe it's a repeat of what happened in silver. 74 to 1980, where silver's faking everyone out. Everyone knows fundamentally it should be going up. It's going sideways or staying in the trading range. We're all about ready to give up like we are right now. And then it just goes and goes and goes. So with its long history of being manipulated through booms and busts, silver holds a unique position as a monetary metal, considered a strategic asset alongside gold. The dynamics of silver's price movements often serve as barometers for the financial system's health and the dollar's value. An illustrative example from the 1970s showcases silver's potential to signal economic distress despite initially remaining subdued amidst high inflation. During that period, the Hunt brothers famously attempted to corner the silver market, triggering an unprecedented price surge. Soaring from around $6 to nearly $50 per ounce, silver's rally outpaced even gold's gains. David Morgan suggests that today's seemingly stagnant silver market may be laying the groundwork for a similar dramatic uptrend reminiscent of the 1970s. Endgame investor Rafi Farber repeatedly shared this sentiment in his last few interviews, asserting that the 1970s are repeating for silver. While seeing historical spikes in silver prices followed by corrections, Peter Krauth argues that the current market conditions indicate significant undervaluation. Despite concerns about broader market sell-offs impacting silver miners and juniors, Krauth sees limited downside potential due to the already negative sentiment surrounding silver. Since the beginning of the year, silver has been trading in a relatively tight range between $22 and $23.72. This month, we witnessed a notable breakout, with silver surging past $25. Moreover, this surge continues as silver has rallied significantly over the past week, surpassing the $24.50 mark and now aiming to breach the crucial $26 level. However, surpassing $26 may prove challenging, given its historical significance as a resistance level. So, it'll be interesting to see what happens this time. If achieved, it could signal a notable shift in market dynamics. The subsequent hurdle would be around $26.50, marking a point of serious concern. We will present clips from Peter Krauth and David Morgan's interviews with the Vancouver Resource Investment Conference. But before we do, if you want more videos like this, Please hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell for more updates. Thank you and enjoy the video. The point I'm making is this. Back in the 70s, we had very high inflation uh, for quite some time. Silver didn't react. And I've forgotten that. And then it actually went up and started to participate. Then it fell back off. And then it went ballistic. So having that in mind with the last market, they don't repeat, but they rhyme, is maybe we're in that kind of a situation where every one of us silver bulls go, what the heck is going on? And maybe it's a repeat of what happened in 74 to 1980, where silver's faking everyone out. Everyone knows fundamentally it should be going up. It's going sideways or staying in the trading range. We're all about ready to give up like we are right now. And then it just goes and goes and goes. So that's what I wanted to add, Jesse. So, um, I mean, it's already crazy cheap. <laughs> yeah. It's already been so blown out. Uh, you know, I'll, I'm never going to say never. I'm never going to say it's impossible. And if you do get, uh, you know, some sort of a uh, dramatic sell-off in, in the broader markets, I would expect it's going to bleed into uh, into silver miners and, and silver juniors. But the um, the downside just seems so limited already. Um, the, the, the sentiment is just so bad already that I have a hard time seeing much downside at this point. It's, it's just, it's, um, it's, it's, it's absolutely a buyer's market. It, it most definitely is. I did want to add something that kind of, um, uh, reflects, uh, and mirrors what, uh, what David was saying about, you know, buying, buying things that are, uh, below the cost of production. I've been saying lately that uh, silver is the new oil. And if you look at uh, the, the use of silver in solar panels and that the International Energy Agency expects that power from, from solar will be um, the, the largest source of electricity globally within two or three years. 
surpassing coal and surpassing um, natural gas. So that's going into a lot of silver. That's why I, I'm calling it the new oil. But I'm also saying that silver is the next uranium. Look at what happened with uranium. How long the uranium price went sideways, um, sold for way under production cost for years, probably half or less than production cost, um, and then exploded higher and doubled in the last six months. I think that that's a great um, um, you know analogy for uh, for what silver can and probably will do. And um, to, to David's point about how silver, you know, is what's going to happen if it, if it, if it rises dramatically and, uh, you know, what, what can happen on the, on the backside of that? Well, yes, historically, absolutely. We've seen these huge run-ups, these spikes, and then um, it's come back down. To David's point, excellent point, it averaged $30 in 1980. I actually believe... Uh, very much that we could have the same sort of thing play out. But given the the growing industrial demand for silver, I cannot see it coming back down. If it went to something like $100 or $150 to see it coming back to down to $30, I just cannot see that given the, uh, the, the burgeoning and growing demand for uh, for this metal. So, um, you know, it's just, it's just, uh, uh, it's a gift, really. It's it's a gift. It's a it's a generational opportunity at this point, and people need to exercise a patient. It's a it's a patience trade, really, is what it comes down to. In recent years, the silver market has been plagued by structural deficits, which have persisted for three to four consecutive years. Despite this supply shortfall, major consumers have been securing their needed silver reserves, prompting inquiries into the acquisition sources amidst a market deficit. Simultaneously, inventories across major exchanges like Shanghai, LBMA, and COMEX have notably decreased by approximately 30 to 40 percent, emphasizing the scarcity of physical silver. In response to these dynamics, Peter Krauth observes that large industrial consumers are adapting their acquisition strategies. Additionally, they are exploring ETFs as alternative avenues for exposure to silver, with the possibility of converting units into physical metal. However, Concerns persist about the sustainability of secondary acquisition methods to offset the structural deficit in the silver market. Depleted supplies may challenge physical delivery, increasing volatility, and market uncertainty, especially if cash settlements replace physical delivery due to rule change. Peter predicts that such a scenario may trigger broader market reactions. Meanwhile, David Morgan highlights the historical stability of the gold-silver ratio until the Industrial Revolution shifted silver's role from a monetary asset to an industrial commodity. Despite historical norms, the modern gold-silver ratio has fluctuated significantly, reflecting evolving perceptions of silver's value. The surge in institutional investment in silver markets surpassing industrial demand complicates the landscape, questioning the sustainability of silver supply amidst rising demand. This poses challenges for traditional silver users, highlighting the necessity to address supply dynamics in the market. Let's get back to the interview. I think what's happening is that you know, we've had three, four years of consecutive structural deficits in the silver market. So, you know, the, the big consumers are getting their silver somewhere, right? Because you, if there's a deficit, but, you know, everyone's still getting their silver. But if you look at the three major exchanges, the Shanghai, the LBMA, and the COMEX, they've all seen their inventories drop. Now, overall silver inventories, from what I've been able to gather, you know, digging up charts, are down about 30 to 40 percent. These are hundreds of millions of ounces. Um, and we're not even talking about registered silver. So David probably knows this better than I do. Uh, he probably follows that part of the, the market more. But from my understanding, it's the registered silver that is actually available for delivery. So long story short, to make it simple, I think these large consumers, mostly industrial consumers, are going to uh, the futures market, buying long contracts, waiting, uh, uh, taking delivery, standing for delivery when they mature. They could be buying silver ETFs, cashing in um, those units and standing for delivery of those bars. Um, and so that's fe that's feeding that demand. While there's a structural deficit, there, there are these secondary supplies in ETFs and at the uh, futures um, uh, markets that is feeding that re requirement, that, that supply requirement, and, and kind of offsetting the structural uh, deficit. 
when that runs out, I mean, it's hard to guess. It's hard to see really how many ounces are, are still left. There's always, you know, there's always probably supplies beyond that even. Uh, but when that runs out, someone someone's going to stand for delivery and they're going to tell them, sorry, we've just changed the rules. We don't have the silver available for you. We're going to have to pay you out in cash. And that's when the proverbial, you know, what hits the fan. And I think the sparks are going to start flying. Um, I'm curious what David thinks. Chart of silver on the gold silver ratio. And you go back thousands of years, you find that the gold silver ratio never got above 20 or 3,400 years, 3,000 to 4,000 years. It's only been since about 1900 that it's got above 100 to 1 a few times. And the reason is that when you go back into the history, silver and gold had one purpose and one purpose only, money. That's all they were. It wasn't until the 19th century with the Industrial Revolution where silver started to be utilized in technological development, electricity, and everything else. So you've had a demonetization of silver in 1873 by the bankers that wanted a gold-only standard. And let me digress for a second. Anyone that really wants to understand money in the markets, look up an article called Gold Standard Equals Fiat in Disguise. It makes a great, great argument for why a gold-only standard is the banker's way to go to a fiat only standard. We need a dual or bimetallic standard. Coming back to the point, so silver really traded at the natural ratio back in the early centuries of 12 to 1. The 16 to 1 bothers me because so many people say, well, that's the natural ratio. It's never been that high. The highest it's ever been is 13 to 1, and now it's 7 to 1 in the earth. But the 15 or 16 to 1 is the monetary ratio. I thought when I started the Morgan Report that 80 to 1 was as high as it would ever be. You know, that's back in 2000. So. And of course, it's been as high as 125 to 1 or thereabouts. And I believe the COVID debacle uh, in March of 2020. And I had, I had admitted, you know, that I was wrong. I'm, I'll admit when I'm wrong. Believe me, I've done it several times publicly. And I thought, okay, I'll get above 100. I never dreamt to get to 125. Didn't stay there for long. Silver has a propensity to spike high and spike low. Regardless, the biggest problem with silver is it's not considered a monetary asset by the institutions. You know, the Silver Users Association, often referred to as the Silver Abusers Association, had one mission, and that was to make sure that silver was kept low in price for industrial use only. And the subset of that, and this again is my thinking, was that it's let's just make sure that everybody's psychology is that silver is not money, that silver is an industrial commodity only. And in that way, we have a lot better chance of making sure that there isn't much investment interest in silver. The outlook for silver in 2024 remains optimistic, with many analysts projecting a rise to $28 per ounce, indicating a pivotal secular breakout level. The attainment of this milestone will be contingent upon the confirmation of a local top by 10-year yields. Should silver breach the $28 threshold, it is anticipated to experience rapid upward momentum, with price targets set in the $32 to $36 per ounce range. What are your thoughts on the future price movement of silver? Do tell us in the comments section below. Also, ensure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.